Daytona Beach, Florida, home to Hangsters, Hot Rods, Muscle Car, and Collective Car Showroom, where we own all of our vehicles. We are not a consignment dealership. During the next seven to eight minutes of this video presentation, we are going to go over our buying process. So if you're already familiar with our process or you've watched our videos in the past, please feel free to fast forward to today's vehicle presentation. In Daytona Beach, we have a 25,000 square foot facility where we house 60 to 70 collector cars, all of which we own. Hangsters.com. We are an internet-based business. We have 100, well, 80 to 100 photographs on our website of each vehicle, along with a 20 to 25 minute video presentation. The reason we have this content on our website is because the majority of the transactions we conduct, conduct month after month and year after year are done sight unseen. Yes, people wire us money for 30, 50, $70,000 cars without ever coming to look at them. However, I do not encourage that you do this. Um, classic cars, they're awesome, nostalgic, have great looks, uh, get a lot of compliments, a lot of eyeball, a lot of appeal. Um, but they're 30, 40, 50 year old cars. They are not that brand new car that you're gonna go get from your Ford or Dodge dealer or Chevrolet dealership. Um, they all have flaws, deficiencies, weaknesses, tendencies, some of which we try to disclose in our video presentation and in our photos on our website. I encourage you to come in person to check out the car for yourself. We would gladly pull the car outside for you. You can check out the paint condition, interior condition, real good out in the natural light. You can pop the hood, you can pop the trunk, look the car real good with your own eyes. We have two twin post lifts here in our Daytona showroom. We'd be more than happy to put the car in air for you if you'd like us to. You can check out the undercarriage, uh, the suspension components, the bottom of the motor, the bottom of the transmission, the floor pan condition, the tire condition. We'll let you drive the car. You can see how the car stops, starts, steers, accelerates, uh, how the transmission shifts, how the ride feels, if there's any noises you don't like, if there's any kind of vibrations or, or anything like that you do not like. This way, when the vehicle shows up to you wherever you're at in the United States or in the world, there are no surprises because you were here and you went over the car for yourself in its entirety. In our photo shoots and in our video presentations, we try to represent each vehicle as honestly and as accurately as we possibly can and offer full transparency. However, we can only cover so much content in a 20 minute video presentation and this is why we encourage you guys to come in person and check the car out for yourself. What happens next once you decide on your classic ride? Where do we go from here? If you're a cash buyer, we accept cashier's check from your bank and bank wire transfer. And if you're coming to visit us in person, you want to bring us cash, we'll take that too. That does still spend today, believe it or not. Maybe you don't have the cash to buy one of these cars. What, what are my financing options? We work with a few different collective car lenders that offer terms on these vehicles. The terms start at five years and they go up to 15 years. Approval is going to be based on your credit bureau, debt to income ratio, time on the job, time at your residence, price of the car, things like that. I discussed 15 year term. They aren't going to do 15 years on a $25,000 car. There is price cutoffs for that 15 year approval and obviously you have to qualify on the credit end. The uh, loans from the lenders are simple interest loans which means if your payment's $500 a month and you pay $800 a month, the extra $300 goes towards principal. Also, no prepayment penalty. So if you get approved for an eight year term, which is about the average approval term, and you pay it off in 12 months, they aren't gonna penalize you for doing so. So that makes it nice to own one of these classics also. Short term money loans, you can do that. And then you can pull money out of your home equity line or your 401k or pull cash out of the bank, whatever the circumstances that you have are. Once the vehicle is paid for, what happens? The car goes through a pre-delivery inspection process. We sell old cars. Anything can stop working, anything can start leaking at any given moment. Therefore, we put the vehicle through one last shakedown prior to it leaving our facility and heading your direction. We torque the lug nuts, we check the tire pressure, we check the fluid levels, make sure the AC's blowing cold if it's equipped, make sure your brake lights work, your horn works, your wipers work, all of that stuff. Once it's green lighted and the guys say it's good to go, then we detail it. After it goes through detail, a carrier is dispatched if we are the ones handling the shipping. We can typically have a truck here within 48 hours. However, 
If you're in a more rural or remote destination or a holiday falls in there, or maybe you're on the West Coast where they do fewer runs because of obviously the travel distance, it may take three, four, five business days to get a truck here, but I promise you, we know you're excited to get your ride. We are excited we earned your business as a customer. We will get you your vehicle as quickly and as safely as we possibly can. If you're the one handling the shipping, let's say you're sending your own carrier or you're coming with your own enclosed or open transport or you're driving the car home because you're close enough, we'll let you know when the vehicle is ready and you can come pick the vehicle up. That about covers our uh, purchasing process here at Hangsters Hot Rods of Daytona. So let's get started with today's vehicle presentation. We move a lot of cars here in our Daytona Beach showroom, a lot of classic cars. And uh, one of the most popular cars right now is the Chevrolet Chevelle. From 66 to 72, we are moving through uh, quite a few of them. And we have a beautiful one to present to you today, 1969 big block car. So let's check this one out. Uh, you are looking at a 396 car. Uh, does have a cowl tag that is present underneath the uh, driver's side uh, hood closure there. So we will have a photo of that on our website for you guys. Uh, does have a power brake booster. So car does have power brakes. And it even, not only does it have a power steering reservoir, but it has a silver power steering reservoir. So the power steering in the car is absolutely fantastic seeing as how it's chrome. Black car, badass looking black car. Great color combination. Black exterior, red interior, which is always a, a highly desirable combination on the Chevelle. Um, the paint on the car is fantastic. Uh, I don't know if you can catch up, uh, catch a glimpse of it here on the showroom, in the showroom. Uh, the the, gla the uh, black's like a mirror. It's, it's really nice. Uh, so black, even though it is not only a highly desirable color, but also a... Um, you know, a, a color that shows imperfections like no other. Well, this one, uh, this paint on this car, in my opinion, eight and a half to a nine out of 10. It's really quite fantastic. SS396 badge uh, in the center of the grill. The grill is in really nice condition on the car. Um, so is the front bumper. Uh, front bumper, no uh, rust pitting, no uh, rust around your bumper bolts, uh, no flaking or peeling of the chrome. Uh, very nice chrome up front there on the bumper of our 69. Stepping around the car, I love these wheels on the car. Look at, they are uh, boss. It's like a uh, brushed gray and then has a, um, this is not a beauty ring, it's actually in the wheel itself. So it's a brushed gray center with like a, um, a chrome uh, insert inlay, whatever you want to call it, chrome center cap. Uh, five chrome lug nuts, awesome look, uh, great looking wheel with the low profile tire and the black car. It really makes it look like a, a fantastic muscle car. This looks like something to be used in a movie or something. Uh, how about the paint on the front fender? Awesome uh, paint, good uh, clarity, uh, uniform clear, uniform color, uh, real, real nice paint. SS396 on the uh, driver's side front fender there. No paint issues down low. We'll get a shot here low on the fender. You can see that there's no paint issues there. Let's check our glass clarity up front here. Front windshield area, um, no issues. Uh, the dash pad does have a little bit of a ripple that you can see through the front windshield, um, just from age. And of course, this is a uh, Florida car, sun beating through the front windshield, really does a number on your dash pad. Um, so uh, it is what it is. But uh, it's not cracked or torn or ripped or punctured or anything like that. It's just kind of a little warpy up there, if that's even a word, warpy. That's funny, right? Okay, so um, drip rail molding. Uh, nice, installed properly. Uh, glass clarity there on your uh, door glass, uh, quarter glass, real nice. I mean, I, there's, it's about as good as it gets for one of these old cars. Uh, the uh, door. Driver door, real nice. Um, there's no issues there, paint-wise, uh, going on down low on the uh, driver door. There is a paint issue right here. Uh, I don't know, you know, it's just a paint crack right there on the driver's side, um, so be aware of that. I think it's the only paint issue on the entire car, but I'll, uh, I'll check that over real good. Um, the interior of the car is absolutely fantastic. Uh, let's start out with the door panel. I mentioned earlier in the presentation, red color. 
Uh, red door panel, red armrest, that's all in great condition. Let's jump to our back seat here really quick. Um, vinyl, great condition, seat cushion, good condition, armrests in the rear, headliner, all in real good shape in our 69 Chevelle. Uh, the carpet does show a little bit of age, um, definitely not brand new, does have some uh, discoloration, nothing heavy, um, you know, just right there, I don't even know if you can see it, just lightly, maybe some stain somewhere. Um, the uh, driver's seat, vinyl, in real good shape. Steering wheel appears to be new to me. Look at that center, four-speed car, right? Center console, four-speed, 69 big block Chevelle, black. Doesn't get much better than that. Your uh, floor mats underneath. Again, carpeting not brand new. Like So let's take a look up by the center hump there. I'm not sure if you can see it. See how it's real nice and red underneath the uh, where the floor mat covers it? And then uh, beyond that, it's a little bit different color. Again, it's not terrible. It's just, it is what it is. It's not a brand new carpet. It's, it's old. So um, carpet's cheap to replace if you want to put a new carpet in it. But I don't think it needs a new carpet. It's just, you know, I'm pointing out for those sight unseen buyers anything I think that would be a uh, concern to you when you get the car. So, um, Steering wheel, like I said, looks to be newer. Center console's in real good shape. All the vinyl in the car's in fantastic condition. Uh, sun visors appear to be newer. A lot of positive stuff going on in the interior of this uh, vehicle. Let's jump up to our roof for a moment. Uh, once again, this was not an inexpensive paint job. I don't have any history on the car, when it was painted, when the motor was done, when the tranny was done, when the interior was done, anything like that. But let me tell you something, it's not a cheap paint job on this car at all. Rear quarter, let's uh, get a shot low in front of the wheel and behind the wheel on the driver's side uh, rear. There's no issues with that rear quarter panel. I showed you that little mark by the uh, driver door there. Maybe something bumped it or fell into it, not really sure, but uh, it was like that when we bought it. And Uh, check out that glass clarity on the rear windshield. Uh, chrome around the rear windshield, real nice shape. Your hat rack, speaker rack area in real nice condition. Top of the back seat, no rips, tears, anything going on there. Deck lid, same deal as the rest of the car. Uh, uniform color, uniform clear, no paint issues. Tops of the quarters, real nice. Uh, deck lid, real nice. Chrome on the rear bumper, real, real nice condition. Uh, same thing as the front bumper, they both look relatively new. Uh, there's no uh, signs of uh, excessive age, any kind of uh, rust or peeling. Let's take a look in the trunk. Trunk mat, no jack, no spare. So you don't get those uh, with the car. If they're in the photos and they're in the uh, video presentation, you get them with the car. If they're not, we didn't get one, so therefore you don't get one. Trunk pan. Nice shape, no rust, no rot, no issues. Get our trunk mat to lay back down there. Passenger side of this vehicle. Uh, by the way, the body lines are real nice. Take notice to how nicely the uh, passenger side door closes to the uh, rear quarter, to the front fender. Uh, door gaps are nice on the car. Windows fit real good. The uh, rear quarter on the passenger side, same as the driver's side. There are no paint issues on the rear quarter, high or low. Uh, this glass in this car has had to have been done, I would say, within the last five to seven years. I mean, it's, it's, the quarter glass is real nice. Door glass is real nice. It's real nice glass clarity throughout the entire car. Uh, chrome on the door handles are pretty nice shape too. Those look newer, not brand new, but newer for sure. Uh, passenger side of the car, door panel, armrest, passenger side seat, floor mats, seat belts, everything all in real nice shape. Uh, car has got a real nice interior. The uh, floor mats, you know, carpeting, everything's real nice. Nothing in there needs to be replaced. It's all in real nice, in real nice shape. So let's take a look at the. Uh, Passenger side fender last. Before we do that, let's pan the bottom of the door on the passenger side just to show you. Uh, no paint issues going on down there. Uh, no blisters, bubbles, cracks, any kind of uh, Bondo 
issues. Uh, your SS396 badges also look to be fairly newer. Um, they're uh, nice shape. Uh, wheel opening moldings, all four look to be good. Uh, chrome, once again, uh, I love those wheels. Very nice wheels on the car. I'm very, uh, uh, I, I, I just really like those wheels, and they look freaking awesome on this car. It's a really great, uh, whoever picked those wheels for this car wasn't me, so I can't take the credit for that, but uh, did a nice job. Good wheel selection for the color combination. 1969 Chevrolet SS Chevelle. Let's put it up in the air. We'll check out the undercarriage of this fine car and then we'll drop it down on the ground. It's a beautiful day here in Daytona Beach. We'll take it on a test drive to show you how the car performs. This thing's pretty sweet underneath, right? Let's check it out. The uh, front brakes, of course, disc. Uh, let's get a shot of the front of the pan, block, front seal. So your front seal, nice and dry. Driver's side of the pan, driver's side of the block. See that freeze plug up there, how it looks? If it's not new, it's definitely in really good shape. And then the uh, passenger side of the block there, um, passenger side oil pan gasket. Looks good. Let's jump back uh, past the cross member. You do have your headers. There's not really much you can see of the oil pan, filter on this side, header, and then of course your starter in the way. Um, let's take a look at uh, the headers, the exhaust, the floor pans. First of all, the headers, no uh, rust holes, rot holes, pin holes in those, so those are in great shape. No, uh, no areas where any kind of uh, suspension components, steering components punctured the headers, so those are in, in nice condition. Uh, your floor pans, all one solid piece all the way back, driver's side and passenger side. So when you're looking at floor pans, you know, look for any kind of uh, patches or silicone or, you know, subpar workmanship, and there's none on this car. It's, they're in really nice shape. Uh, the exhaust pipes that come off of your uh, headers and continue back into an H pipe and then back to your Flowmaster mufflers, not only does it look to be in good condition, like a newer unit, but also, um, you know, there's no issues whatsoever as far as any kind of exhaust leaks. Um, those welds on the uh, exhaust system, somebody, looks like a professional job, definitely doesn't look like a backyard job. Uh, really nice run beads on the welds, uh, no holes in the mufflers. The uh, brakes in the rear are drum. Gas tank appears to be in good shape. Looks like a newer tank to me, in my opinion. Um, the uh, rear end is 12 volt. <clears throat> Tires have great uh, tread life left. So there's your wear bars. You know, these are low profile tires or like a uh, slick tire. So you don't have as much tread to begin with as a regular tire, but uh, plenty of tread left to the wear bars. And then of course there's no dry rot or cracking in between the treads. Uh, frame rails on the car look real nice. You can see the passenger side frame rail right here. There's no issues with it. It's not bent. It's not, um, doesn't have any holes in it. It's not welded in any uh, way, shape, or form. The um, frame rails look real good going up over the rear end. And then, of course, your exhaust comes just to a simple turn down here inside of your uh, quarter panel. Really great looking 69 Chevelle. I have not driven this one yet, so I'm going to get to do so here right now. We're going to set it on the ground, take it out on a run, and show you how the vehicle runs out. 69 Chevelle, four speed, horn, wipers, driver's side turn, 40,380 is the miles on the odometer, title reads exempt, true miles unknown. Passenger side turn. If anyone cares, that itty bitty clock in there is actually ticking. Fuel gauge works. Temp gauge works and oil pressure gauge works. The radio is a retro radio. It does come on. However, I cannot get a radio station to tune, but there is an auxiliary, so I don't know if it works or not. Assuming that it doesn't, though. Uh, real nice car, um, plenty powerful, and we're going to show you that right this very moment. 
This is a friggin' car. This is what a muscle car should be. The look, the feel, the performance. Uh, the, uh, the Speedo is functioning. The car tracks perfect. Steering's nice and tight in the car. The motor's set up fantastic. The exhaust has the perfect sound, in my opinion. It's not really crazy excessive, but when you step on the throttle, you can hear the freaking exhaust. It, it's real nice. No tire vibration, engine vibration, tranny vibration. The car's not popping out of gear. Look at where we're cooling at. So big blocks should run about 190, 195, 200. And we're right 182 maybe. So that's cooler than it even should run, which I'm happy about. Real, real nice car. Look, brakes, look. Right next to an Amazon truck. This thing is nice, I like this car. Good oil pressure, good temp. Nice idle, look at the idle. We're idling perfectly. It's not stalling out. I don't have to keep my foot on the gas to keep the car going. That's a muscle car sound. That says, I have a badass car. Well, the traffic's gonna take my fun away. I only got to about 50 because I'm catching up the traffic. You got a real nice keyway on this car. Uh, the shifters, the shift pattern is real easy to find. It doesn't bind up. The car tracks perfectly. There's no tire vibration, um, no front end pull, no shake in the steering wheel when you're when you're driving. Just a really nice car. Once again, look at our temp. We haven't even moved. Really pleased with the way this car drives, performs, looks. It's it's a really nice vehicle. A great look too, right? Black exterior, awesome wheels, red interior, four-speed car, center console. Great rumble. I'm happy. 386-944-9219 is our contact phone here in Daytona Beach. Hangsters.com is our website. It's where you can find all the photos of this vehicle along with this video presentation you're watching right now. You know, this is my test drive pattern. One day these freaking chuckles just appeared. They weren't there and then they just appeared somehow. So, I don't know, whatever. But now it, you gotta pull to the left so it doesn't... Some of these cars I drive are real low, you know? You don't wanna bottom out. Headers, damage. Anyways, sorry, I got sidetracked. At full retail price, our 69 Chevelle includes shipping in the lower 48 United States on an enclosed carrier. It also includes a powertrain warranty. That warranty is good at any ASC certified facility in the United States. It covers the engine, the transmission, and the rear end, internal components, major mechanical breakdowns. It does not cover brakes, batteries, starters, alternators, tires, anything else you can think of that's not part of the drivetrain powertrain. The warranty is good at any ASC certified facility in the United States, which is most independent and franchised facilities. You just can't take it to some guy you know three houses down from you that always has a car up on jack stands in his front yard. Is the price of the vehicle negotiable? It most certainly is. If we negotiate the price of the car, the warranty comes off. The warranty is good at full retail price only. There's no exceptions to that rule, so you don't have to bother asking that question. Just Pass right by that question and move on to the next one. Also, at a negotiated cost, you'll handle the shipping logistics. Maybe you have a carrier you've used in the past that you had a good experience with. That's cool, we'll use them. Whoop, I'm in reverse. <laughs> at a negotiated cost, you'll handle the shipping, whether it's on your uh, you know, a carrier you've used in the past, or maybe you have your own open or enclosed trailer. You want to trailer this car home, there's no issue there whatsoever. 
And of course, if you're local to us here in the Sunshine State and you want to drive this 69 Chevelle home, you can certainly do that because look, we just sat at a traffic light all that time and we're still only a buck 90. So that's fantastic for one of these big blocks, you know, given the uh, circumstances. It's an old car, you know, but uh, whoever set this motor up, uh, set it up nicely, it cools properly like it should, um, and it performs like it should, like a big block should. Hankster's Hot Rods is located in Central Florida, sunny Daytona Beach. And once again, our website is hanksters.com. Check us out. We'd love to earn your business, add you to our growing customer base, not only throughout the United States, but throughout the entire world. We do export these cars as well. Switzerland, Sweden, Germany, New Zealand, Australia. We've shipped them a couple different places. And uh, we'd be more than happy to help you uh, get the vehicle to your country uh, as well. Hangsters Hot Rods, Hangsters.com. Check us out.